Hi, this is David. Today I'm going to show you one of my favorite tools, the Azure Storage Explorer. Now this is a free tool available from Microsoft. I can find it just by searching with whatever your favorite search engine is. Just type in Azure Storage Explorer and right here the very first non-ad Azure Storage Explorer. There it is. Azure to Microsoft.com slash features slash storage explorer is where it is and you can right there download it and what this will do is it'll download a an installer storage explorer.exe is actually a designed to actually install storage explorer so I'll click on that to launch it and I want to say let's, let's do it for all users here I happen to be on a virtual machine so doesn't matter that much, but I'll accept the agreement, whatever that says. That looks, that sounds reasonable to me. And click on install. It asks me where I want to install. For me, the default location is just fine. Um, what's the name of the menu folder? Default again is fine. And in a matter of a few seconds, it's going to install this onto my computer. It'll then be part of my start menu, and I can launch it from there. Now I click finish and we are done and ready to launch the Azure Storage Explorer. After installation it'll actually launch itself but I can launch it again simply by clicking on the start menu and right here is Microsoft Azure Storage Explorer. I can do that or I can find it just by typing in here Azure Storage Explorer. That'll find it as well. But here it is with some notes on the latest version happened to come out in December of 2020. I want to close that. And I can maximize it and wait for it to load anything here. If I have the storage emulator loaded on this machine, I can actually connect to storage accounts locally or I can connect to storage accounts out in the cloud. Our next step is to connect to an Azure storage account. And this dialog allows us to do that. And if I happen to cancel it, I can always get back to it. This icon right here, open and connect dialog right here. And you can see there's a few ways to do it. Just to connect to an account or give it the name of the uh, storage account and a key, etc. Uh, I've always found the simplest way is just to say use a connection string. And click next right here. And then it'll ask us to a name that will appear in this list over here. I'll call it my uh, GCast storage account and then the connection string I can get from the Azure portal. And I happen to have a storage account that I set up just for these purposes. So I'll log into my Azure account and go to the portal and right there there's my storage account is called GCAS storage. I just created it a few minutes ago so there's nothing in it right now and in fact if I look at this in browser storage explorer I'll see a few things like there are no blob containers or file shares or queues or tables they're just it's all brand new so I can do a little bit of stuff in here but this graphical interface makes it a lot easier um, so what I need to do is under access keys I'm gonna grab a connection string either one of these will do so let me click on one of these keys right here let's click on show keys and then grab that right there, and I'm going to delete this as soon as I'm done, so you're welcome to memorize those, but they'll be gone in a minute. And I'll just paste in that connection string right there. I'll click Next. It warns me, do you trust this connection? I'm like, yeah, I trust it. I just created it. And it'll go out to Azure and Authenticate, and that connection string needs all the information that it needs. And now we see an extra node appears here under storage account for GCAS storage. That's what I've just connected to. I can open up and you can see there's underneath a node for blob containers, file shares, queues, and tables. I can expand these and see that there's only thing under blob is this built-in one. Same thing with tables, just some built-in stuff right here. None of my custom things because this is a brand new storage account. 
but I can add things. I can right click on blob containers and say create blob container and add a new container. Call it my container. I call it whatever I want. Right here, and it shows up right here. And in fact, if I go back over to the portal, I can come down here to Storage Explorer and see that under Blob Containers, there is my container. I'm updating exactly the same thing. I can come in here, I can add, I can upload a file. And if I go out and search for files under backslash gcast, I've got a folder here. I'm going to add myfile.txt and upload it. And something that doesn't sometimes it doesn't refresh immediately. You have to click refresh to see it. But there it is, myfile.txt. And again, it's also right here. If I refresh this, I see it here as well. They're both updating exactly the same thing. There's some nice tools in here where if I want to update an entire folder, I can do that. Come to here and say I've got a folder called ABC. And if I go back over here, you'll see that ABC actually contains two text files. So if I select that folder and update, upload it, then when I refresh, I see there's my folder ABC, and beneath that are two text files. And I can even look at these text files. If I look at them on disk, you'll see file one is, is, is this is file one inside of that. And if I go into the Storage Explorer and I want to just open the file. Actually, what it'll do is it'll download it locally to my computer, and then it'll open it with whatever the appropriate program is for that file extension. For text, I've got set, that set to open up using Notepad. So this is a really nice tool for managing blobs. Um, I can also delete things in here, highlight something. I can even highlight multiple things using the Shift or the Control keys, and then click on uh, this Delete right here like that. I can highlight something and copy it. I can look at the history of a file as it's changed. I can look at statistics on it and and so on. Um, under uh, tables, tables are kind of nice. These are uh, I can create one right here. Right click and say create table and give it a name. I'll just call this one my table. And now that I have a table, I can add some entities to it. There's a couple of ways of adding entities. One is by clicking this Add button right here, and I can say uh, every um, entity must have a partition key and a row key, and the combination of the two must be unique within that table. And I can add a property. I'll call it uh, First Name, and I'll do uh, Scott, and Last name Allen in honor of uh, my friend Scott Allen passed away a couple years ago how about um, level 1000 and is active I wanted to make this a an integer and I want to make that a boolean so is active false and so on. And insert that. And in here now I've got a row in here. The other way I can import is to, or the other way I can add entities is by importing them. And I've got this file, this file called gcastdemo.csv. Let me show it to you right here. It's just a common delimited text file. It has a pro partition key, row key, first name, last name, level, is active. They don't have to be the same properties for every row in here, but I happen to do that right here. And here it's got uh, me and Satya Nadella and Bill Gates and Steve Ballmer. I'm a level 60. I'm not a 65. I'm a 63. And these guys, I don't actually don't know what level they are, but I just know that they were higher than me. So I'll close this off and uh, go back in here and actually import that. And if I do that, like this, then I'll see it'll preview what those properties are for the first row in here, and I'll click on ent entities, and here you see that because I named them the same, they'll be uh, same properties that'll be this in a column format right here. So now we've got four rows in here, one, two, three, four, five rows in here um, that we can do here, and just like with a blob, we can actually uh, the files in a blob or the objects in a blob, we can actually come in here and we can delete one or more of those. If I want to delete a couple of them, let's delete Bill and Steve since they're retired. We'll just delete them right here. What do they ever do for us, those guys? And 
edit a particular row if I want to edit this and say no it's not David you know what I'm gonna sneak out of here and let my brother Dan take over and let's give him our bonus bump him up to a 64 and so on I can edit those things we can also export a table like this into just throw it in the downloads folder, that's fine, mytable.csv, and export that into a delimited text file. There it is, right here. And if I open it up, you can see the rows that are remaining are all right here. So we've got a lot of flexibility, and this graphical interface just makes it a whole lot easier to work with this. Um, it's especially simple if you've got multiple storage accounts you'd work with simultaneously. If I want to do that, if I had three or four of those storage accounts at, that I want to work with at a time, well, in the portal, what I have to do is I could have them on different tabs, or I could be switching back and forth constantly between them. It's a bit of a hassle, whereas up here they can all be just a click away. If I wanted to move from here to here and back again, I can get to them really quickly. So in this video, I've shown you the basics of how to, how to use a very useful tool, the Microsoft Azure Storage Explorer. This is David. Thank you for watching.